What's up guys and welcome to uh, part one of my overclocking series. This isn't necessarily going to be a guide, I just wanted to go in and test and see how much of a performance boost I'm actually getting. So uh, one thing I do a lot obviously is render videos. So I wanted to know, uh, is running my chip at 4.4 gigahertz really helping me that much? Is it really saving me that much time? So that'll be this video. In part two, I'm gonna go into gaming and uh, see how much an overclocked chip can help there and compare it on uh, some CPU intensive games like Arma and Battlefield versus some uh, really basic games like maybe like a Bioshock one or some older games that, that aren't really using all your cores and we'll kind of compare all those. And then in part three, I'm gonna go in and actually start overclocking the GPU and we can see uh, what kind of difference it will make in gaming and all kinds of other applications. So, uh, getting into this, uh, I'm just in my BIOS real quick, and this is my 4.4 overclock. I'm not at all an expert on overclocking, by the way, so if you see something that's uh, set up uh, like a dumb dumb, let me know. But uh, this has been running stable for about a year now, this clock that I've had, and uh, I do not have a silicone lottery chip by any stretch of the means. This is incredibly mediocre. <laughs> uh, I do run offset voltage. Uh, I think it works best for uh, just power consumption and overall heat. If you're going to be using your computer all day, you know, it's better to be better to have it throttle down every once in a while than have it, you know, just pinned all the time. So I do use offset voltage and I actually have to use negative voltage to get a 4.4 overclock because my VID is so high. Um, so I'm also going to keep the XMP profile on my RAM just so that's a constant. And then I'm going to go back to the stock clock and then we're going to compare and contrast on these uh, video renders. So without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty guys, so we're in Sony Vegas now and I have this little clip that you probably saw at the very beginning of this video. Uh, just a little chopper flying and uh, what we're going to do is render as a WMV, which is a CPU render. And I'm gonna render it on this preset. I'll use it again for the next test, but uh, just so you guys can see. Uh, CBR, I use quality VBR rendering at 86%. I know a lot of people do this. Um, seconds per keyframe, two. Um, and that's about it. Uh, video rendering quality at best. And then I'm gonna click OK. So I'm gonna go ahead and render this. I'm gonna turn off the recording because I don't want it to uh, be hitting the CPU, you know, recording and rendering at the same time. Not good. So to keep the results fair, I'm gonna turn off the uh, recording, render this video out, and then when it's done, I'll turn the recording back on and I can show you the time and how long it took to render. And then we will compare the results at the end. But without further ado, let's uh, let's get to rendering. Alrighty guys, and the 4.4 uh, overclock just finished, and the time is 3 minutes 11 seconds. So, I'm curious uh, how much time I'm actually saving having this, uh, this overclock on. And uh, when we get to the stock clock, uh, we can uh, compare the two. But uh, right now, I'll go into the BIOS and show you the stock clocks. Alrighty guys, and we're back in the BIOS. I'm just going to show you my 3.4 settings. Uh, I'm not sure what all motherboards default to, but this is uh, pretty much as basic as it gets. The only thing I turned off was the turbo boost, because I don't know if all motherboards do this. I'm just kind of comparing it to uh, somebody that didn't really know what they were doing. If they just fired up their computer for the first time, this is what would happen. So. Uh, obviously the 3570K is advertised as a 3.4 gigahertz uh, chip, so I wanted to keep it that way. I think with a turbo boost it will go up to like 3.8 or 3.7, but uh, I wanted to keep it as bare bone stock as possible. So everything's on auto, still have the XMP profile, all this stuff is on auto. So, um, without any more going back into the BIOS, <laughs> here is the stock clocks. Alrighty, and you can see we're back in Vegas, and we got our same clip all ready to go again. I'll just uh, go back into the render settings once again, and uh, use that same preset. You can see it's going to be the same every time. Um, but anyway, I'm going to render this one out, and uh, we'll see what the difference is going to be. 
So it looks like four minutes and eight seconds is what we got on the stock clock. So very interesting stuff. Um, I'm gonna put together a little thing right here. And voila, <laughs> I made a little graph and uh, hopefully this helps some of you visually, but basically what I did is uh, a roughly a 30% uh, increase in clock speed and got roughly a 25% decrease in my render time. So I almost worked out one to one there. That would've been pretty cool <laughs> not having planned that. But uh, uh, anyway, I'm glad to finally have that kind of settled. I was always curious and I never knew. Ooh, look at the fishes swim away in Bioshock 2. What year did this game come out? Yeah, <laughs> I digress. But uh, it's it's fun to finally know like I have an actual number that I can tell people like my overclock helped me you know X amount rather than being like it just helps me so anyway uh, I hadn't really seen anybody actually sit down and you know do do a video render and see how much it actually improved their their time and speed so anyway guys thank you so much for watching and uh, stay tuned for parts two and three where we overclock the CPU and GPU and see what happens in games alrighty guys I'll talk to you later